Before we get into the episode, I would like to extend a friendly invitation to join us on our Patreon community. There you can find ad-free, uncensored, and exclusive content you can't get anywhere else. I would also like to draw your attention to the merchandise shelf below this video, where you can get shirts and other apparel while further supporting this channel and helping us grow. I sincerely appreciate all of your support for this channel, and I look forward to the growth that 2020 will bring. Now let's dive right into the episode. Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers DUI checkpoints, vehicle inspections, and firearms, and comes to us from Knowledge is Power's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Let's dive right in and audit the audit. On the night of February 20th, 2014, Auditor Ashton Wolin intentionally drove through a DUI checkpoint at the intersection of Dupree Road and King Arthur Drive in Woodstock, Georgia, where he was stopped by two unnamed Georgia State Patrol troopers. Howdy. How's it going? Doing good. About yourself? Oh, you wasn't down there, but... I'm comfortable right there. Do what? I'm, com I'm comfortable with it right there. You're comfortable with it right there? Yes, sir. Let me see your driver's license. Open the door, dude. Uh, if you want to take the back, you can roll that window down for me. What'd you say, sir? Sorry. What did you say? Because they can't hardly hear you, that's why. If you roll the window down, we're just out looking for drunks, man. We're not here to hurt you or whatever. That's fine. I just... Okay, pull over on that side or just a minute. Right over here. I'm gonna check the big one, okay? For what reason do you have to detain me to pull me over into secondary, sir? Pull over on the side so we can do a big one inspection right over For there. what reason? Are you suspecting huh? me of committing a crime? Do what, buddy? Have you suspected me of committing a crime? The legalities surrounding DUI checkpoints vary wildly from state to state and are subject to both state and federal regulations, with some states, such as Idaho, Iowa, Michigan, Minnesota, and others, banning them altogether. In the 1990 case of Michigan Department of State Police v. Sitz, the Supreme Court held that DUI checkpoints were not in violation of the Fourth Amendment so long as they serve a specific governmental interest, are only minimally in intrusive, and follow specific guidelines. Each police department is responsible for drafting their own policies regarding checkpoints, but must adhere to the minimum standards set forth by both federal and state law. A question often asked regarding checkpoints is whether or not it is legal to turn away from a checkpoint and avoid going through it. There are no laws which prohibit citizens from avoiding a roadblock, and the act of turning away from a roadblock cannot serve as reasonable suspicion for a traffic stop so long as no traffic infractions occurred. The 1993 case of Jorgensen v. State and the 2004 case of State v. Hester addressed this issue in the state of Georgia and held that a crime must be suspected in order to stop a motorist and that the act of turning away from a roadblock is not a crime. Could well, is there anything wrong with a car that we need to know about? Not that I know, sir. Oh, okay, all right. Hold on, I'm check your tires. They're looking what? Almost illegal. They're almost too slick. Almost illegal. All right. Where would you like me to pull? Do what? Where would you like me to pull over? I'll go behind that car. Behind that one? Yep. Close, man. So I'm being pulled into secondary because my tires might be illegal. That's interesting. Georgia Vehicle Code 40-8-74 states that vehicles traveling on the roadway should have rubber on its entire traction surface at least one inch thick above the edge of the flange on the entire periphery, and at least one sixteenth inch tread in all major grooves on the vehicle, and one eighth inch tread in all major grooves on the front tires. The trooper's statement that the tires seem almost illegal could be valid if the tread on the tires is significant significantly low. That being said, an eye test alone would not serve as sufficient evidence that a vehicle's tire's tread is illegally low. In order for an officer to cite a citizen under code 40-8-74, the officer would need to measure the tire's tread. Whether or not the tire tread is a valid reason for furthering the detention of Mr. Wollen is covered later in this episode. Everything correct on your license, you still live at the same address? I do, sir. Right, sit tight for me, okay? Go 
put in my car and park. Yes, sir. Why does that mean? Uh, yes, sir. He wants to show you a tire iron, man. It's slick. I'd prefer to not get out of my vehicle. <laughs> I think it needs one, dude. I think it might just want to take one. He wants to show you, dude, where it's slick out here. It's for your safety. That way you can see about getting you another tire. That's it. Let me ask you something. Are you scared? To get out of my vehicle? Yes, sir. You are? Yes, sir. Why are you scared of the law? I'm not scared of the law. Where are you hiding from? I'm not hiding from anything, sir. Okay, well, why are you scared to get out? Because I feel safer. You scared of the dark? Maybe. Huh? I might be. Yeah, I believe you are. Grown man scared of the dark. That sounds kind of funny to me. <laughs> sounds funny. Here, Mr. Wallen intelligently responds to the trooper's unprofessional attempt to instigate a reaction by surrendering the conversational dominance to the trooper. Remaining calm and not allowing an officer's conduct to dictate your own emotions can serve to de-escalate the encounter and strengthen your case in a courtroom. It is difficult to see, but Mr. Wallen has a firearm in the holster on his hip that he does not inform the officers of at any point during the interaction. While it is is a common misconception that citizens are required to disclose their possession of a firearm, it is never a good idea to conceal a firearm from a police officer, especially during a traffic stop where you may be reaching into your center console or glove box to retrieve documentation. If at any point an officer perceives a potential threat, regardless of the true intentions of the suspect, it will only escalate the encounter and could result in the use of deadly force. Considering the skewed nature nature of the justice system, the use of deadly force may be ultimately considered justified. The case of Philando Castile, who was killed by an officer after peacefully disclosing the fact that he had a legal firearm, is a prime example of the grimmest of outcomes regarding firearms and traffic stops. The officer who shot Mr. Castile was arrested, but eventually acquitted of all charges. No exercise of rights is worth risking your life for, and Mr. Wollen's decision to open carry a firearm into a roadblock was reckless and foolish. How about hit your blinkers on? Turn your right blinker on. Turn your right blinker on. I have no need to turn my blinkers on right now. I have no need to turn my blinkers on right now. He's doing a vehicle inspection. He wants to check your vehicle. Turn your right blinker on. Thank you. Now turn your left blinker on. Hit your brakes. Tap your brakes. Put your car in reverse and make sure your backup lights are working. Alright, put it back apart. It'll come around to the front. Check the front blinkers now. Yes, sir. The Georgia Department of Public Safety's policy on the use of roadblocks states that roadblocks must be implemented for a legitimate primary purpose, which is to monitor and check driver's licenses, driver condition, vehicle registration, vehicle equipment, and other requirements of the Georgia Motor Vehicle and Traffic Code, or to locate a suspected criminal likely to be in the area, and that the purpose cannot be general crime detection. While the troopers initially stated that the purpose of the checkpoint was targeted at drunk drivers, the troopers are still within their authority to inspect any vehicle traveling through the checkpoint for equipment malfunctions and general safety hazards. However, the GTPS's policy also requires roadblocks to be clearly identified as a checkpoint, and according to Mr. Wollen, that was not the case. Another interesting fact is that the troopers never asked Mr. Wollen if he had been drinking or attempted to ascertain his level of sobriety at any point during the interaction. If I see this vehicle out on the road again. Yes, sir. I'm going to stop it just because that tire on the right front. Tire on the right it's front? very close. In what way? It so I can change it? It needs a tire replaced. Tire replaced? Yeah, you don't Treads know Trooper Mike Freeman, do you? Who? Trooper Mike Freeman. Not that I know of. You don't know him? Remember him riding you for 84 and a 65? Yes, sir. On 575? See why he's scared to get out now. No, no he was very professional. I actually had a good encounter. Alright, so I guess I'm free to go. I should have asked for name and badge number, but uh, they did the... Uh, 
hand the license as he walked away kind of thing. So I was not able to do so. After all of the threats of citation and intimidation, Mr. Wallen was allowed to leave the scene without further incident and without being ticketed. This was Mr. Wallen's first audit, and although he claimed that he would be conducting audits on a regular basis, after posting only 10 videos, he has since abandoned his YouTube channel. The whereabouts of Mr. Wallen are unclear, and this interaction took place at a time where constitutional activism and recording police interactions was still a relatively new new concept. Following this interaction, Mr. Wallen appeared on a radio show to discuss his encounter. Most of the call-in listeners on the show agreed with Mr. Wallen's actions, with some outliers disagreeing with his tactics. Overall, the troopers of the Georgia State Patrol get a C-, because although they were within their authority to conduct both the checkpoint and the vehicle inspection, the officers acted spitefully and unprofessional. It is clear that the impromptu vehicle inspection initiated by the troopers was a product of Mr. Wollen's reluctance to fully roll down his window, and it is very likely that the officers never would have extended the stop if Mr. Wollen had complied with their request. The subsequent fishing expedition of the troopers demonstrates a serious lack of professionalism and discipline, and only serves to foster a divide between members of the public and law enforcement. Public relations is a major aspect of police duties, and that relationship becomes impossible to maintain when officers prioritize their ego over their obligations to the public and to the law. Mr. Wollen gets an A- for being calculated, well-informed, and composed throughout the entire interaction. While Mr. Wollen did create a potential hazard by open carrying a firearm to a planned traffic audit, he did not break any laws and managed to successfully exercise his rights peacefully and strategically. Mr. Wollen remained calm and articulated his points without being rude or vulgar and refused to allow the troopers to intimidate him or affect him emotionally. Mr. Wollen did exceptionally well for his first audit, and he took the time to be well prepared by researching local, state, and federal laws regarding his interaction before actually committing to an audit. The importance of being well prepared for an audit cannot be understated, and Mr. Wollen's interaction is a great reference point for the proper conduct of civilians interacting with members of law enforcement. Let us know if there's an interaction or legal topic you would like us to cover in the comments below. Be sure to check out our Patreon for more ad-free, uncensored, and exclusive episodes. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more police interaction content.